Hello. Hello everybody. How's it going? Hello Rachel. Hi Joss. Do you know what? This is quite nerve wracking really, isn't it? How's everyone doing? How is everyone doing in isolation and lockdown? Um, hope everybody's doing okay. Hello Led Cosplay. Hey Alicia. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, doing a live Q&A basically, taking over the Outlander uh, Stars Instagram and um, hopefully in the next sort of half an hour be able to answer questions you've got for me or uh, about JQM, the legend that he is um, and yeah, pretty much any questions that you want to uh, want to ask <laughs> Sam Hewan, what's happening but How's it going mate? <laughs> Get a live request on boy or oh. Let's sing you all happy birthday, shall we? Right then, let's have a little look. Um, I'll just kick off with some questions then. Uh, right, the first question is from Please Don't Change. What's your favourite scene in Outlander? Um, well, I am up to date. Obviously, I started watching it. Um, it must have been last year. I binge watched it and I absolutely loved it. Me and my fiance Amy. Um, it was one of those where I, I, I started watching it and then I was like phoning her every day. Um, Please come home quickly from work so we can put Outlander on. Um, and yeah, and it was quite quite weird then going in uh, to work and working with everybody. But uh, no, I don't know. My favourite scene. Um, do you know what? I think my favourite scene. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I tell you what. I'll go. With most recently, my favourite scene um, to shoot was the drinking game scene. Um, clearly, because um, it did look like we were having so much fun. Because we were having so much fun. So um, that would be my favourite uh, scene in Outlander that I was in, anyway. Um, but yeah, it was great. Just working with. Um, all the cast there, Cesar, Lauren, David, Paul Donnelly, everybody was involved in that. It was great. Um, and it was a night shoot as well. So we were there and we were like last up. Um, and it was just, I think it was like three, four in the morning. Uh, so we were a bit delirious anyway, which sort of fed into the whole um, drunkenness of the scene, which was great. But no, it was great. It was a great scene to shoot. And uh, yeah, that, that that'd probably be my favourite scene ever <laughs> wheels uh let's have a look let's have a look another question well, we've got loads of questions guys um who is your favorite character who is your favorite character that's a tough one um do you know what my favorite character i think would have to be uh, I'm gonna say Lord John Gray. He is he's my favourite character. Um I just just feel so sad for him every time he's on the screen knowing what he's going through and what you have to go through. But um uh, he's always there in uh, in everybody's time of need. Um and plus David Berry's an absolute legend so I th I'd say that uh, Lord John Gray is my favourite character, and he's a very, uh, he's he's a gentleman and a, an upstanding citizen of the world. So yes, that that would be my favourite character. Um, let's have a look at some of some other questions you've got. This is mad. I've never done an Instagram live before. It's crazy, man. You crazy, man. You crazy. That's a quote from. Um, a film Will, Will Ferrell was in. Sorry, I I'm just going off on tangents now. How is the home remodel coming along? It's coming. It is coming along. Um, bit off the subject of Outlander, but yeah, it's coming along. Um, I'm basically um, 
just doing the DIY. Um, it is my other half, my better half, that is choosing the styles and designing it all. Um, I do argue a lot and she hates me for it. She'll she'll say something and I'll be like, no, that's not going to go, that's not going to go there. But then uh, I'll eventually give in, um, you know, happy wife, happy life and all that. Uh, and then when it is in situation, um, I'm actually like, mm, okay, maybe you were right. So, but yeah, the, the home remodeling is going very well. Thank you. Um, when I was come to Russia, uh, I wish I, I wish I could go anywhere other than my house at the moment. But Russia is definitely on the cards. I, I'd love to go to uh, Saint Petersburg one day, definitely. Um, let's have a look. Were you honoured to be a new member of the Outlander Clan? Um, well, yeah, obviously, it's as an actor, you're honoured to be a part of any clan and any job and, and any TV series. But when when I first came into Outlander in season four, um, I was totally um, I was totally nervous um, after doing you know hearing about the show and joining in season four. When you when you join something that's on season four, you know it's it's going to be popular, it's going to be big, it's going to have a huge fan base. Um, but the only fear then for an actor, obviously speaking uh, for myself is um, going into something that's already uh, established uh, family-wise with cast and crew. So it's always nerve-wracking, but, you know, like I've said um, before, that Sam and Katrina and the directors, uh, everybody, basically, they all are so friendly. It's, it's just, it is one big family and everybody does really love each other as much as they make out on social media. It's quite strange. Um, but yeah, I was very honoured to be a part of the show and um, I, I just feel incredibly lucky to have the opportunity to um, bring Diana's John Quincy Myers to life and uh, long may he continue. Wheels! <laughs> so yeah, so, but yeah, I was very honoured to be a part, very lucky. Thank you very much for asking that. Uh, right then, I'm struggling. Sorry guys, I'm on my phone and I've set it up so you can see me properly. But... Um, I'm trying to touch my screen very delicately so it doesn't fall over to read the questions. Oh, I've just read that one. See, there we go. There's the first hiccup. Whoops. So there's, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of questions, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get through them. Uh, who's your favourite person to work with? Um, again, like I was just saying, it's everybody. It's, it's great. It's great fun. And... One of the things um, that I love, especially about the Outlander sets, is everybody uh, has got a great sense of humour. Um, and whenever there's, you know, there's always scenes that are really hard to play for actors and, you know, really sensitive and sensitive subjects and whatever. And, and everybody um, is so professional. They treat those, um, you know, so... With, well, with such sensitivity to, to get the job done and to, to get such an honest performance and, and what, what the show deserves. Um, but there is such a, a great humour on set all the time, uh, which I'm sure you all know because you see all the, the behind the scenes stuff that we all post um, and it's, it's incredibly fun. Um, but uh, so I don't really have a favourite person to work with um, because... I don't stop laughing every time I'm on set, whether I'm working with Sam or Kat or Tim or David or Lauren or Cesar um, or everybody. It's it's always fun, you know. So so I don't have any favourites. The whole the whole cast and crew are my favourites. How's that for an answer? Sitting on the fence. I love the show. Thank you so much. Um, we all do too. What's your favourite on set snack? <laughs> Look at me. Everything, everything is my favourite. Um, well, do you know what? It's it's really good on set. You can get whatever if 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 you're like a health freak, um, or well, not a health freak. Sorry, that's I shouldn't have said that then. But you know, like somebody who's really into their health and really fit, um, and you know, isn't a pig like me and doesn't watch what they eat. Then there is an array of healthy snacks. And bites that you can get on the Outlander set from celery sticks to carrot sticks to hummus to protein bars to grenade bars. Sam brings a lot of grenade bars in and shares them up with everybody and they're really nice actually. 
but uh, you can also get you know toasties and cheese and ham um, melts and chocolate fudge brownies and you know so that those sort of things so I, whatever's on hand basically whatever's on hand is my favorite snack but a br but I do like a brownie if I'm honest um, let's have a look what was the biggest blooper on set well I'm an absolute professional so I take it very seriously <laughs> um, there was um, there was one scene actually in season five um, and I can't talk about it now because it's Ed so there was um, a, a very uh, important and tragic ending of a character's life this season um, one of a few and um, when we took him into the tent it was me and Sam Carrie and Duncan and I we barged through the tent because it's really heated and Sam wants to Claire to save to save Murta and um, and then uh, uh, Katrina is just looking at me in hysterics the cameras over her shoulder shooting us and um, and she, her face is going red, tears in her eyes, and I'm just like looking as if to say, you know, what, what, what? And then I've looked behind me, and um, my wig is hanging <laughs> from the tent entrance, um, and the wigs come off. So, so that was uh, quite. I don't know if it, if it's going to be on camera or if it, if it's going to be in the bloopers reel. I don't know if it caught it, but um, but that was hilarious. I just remember us all being in fits of laughter then for about five minutes, um, and I think everybody had a turn of trying John Quincy Myers' wig on as well after that. So, so yeah, that was funny. Uh, you are liking that story, are you? Hello from Spain. Hello, hello, Mac, Maca Mengrion, Mengiron. Sorry, I don't, I don't speak Spanish. Sorry, just full of Will, Will Ferrell quotes tonight. Um, hello from Israel. Brilliant, that's hilarious. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, uh, Let's get through some questions then. Um, hello from Greece. Hello there, Theodora. How are you? Hope you're okay in Greece. Hope you're okay in Ukraine. Let's have a look for some more questions. Oh, there we go. Uh, just done that one. Oh, any other Outlander actor scheduled for your podcast? Such a great one with Sam and Kat. Um, I don't really want to spend too much time talking about uh, the podcast um, on this live, but um, uh, Sam and Katrina were very, very nice to come on the show and give me and Sean Hawley, my co-host, uh, their time. Um, but yeah, the, the episodes are great and everything Sam and Katrina do um, are pretty much good anyway. But um, who knows? Who knows? There's uh, There's a lot of people in the cast to get through so if i can i will try and get them all on the podcast for you guys um but i can't see why not either um everybody uh, helps each other out um with all our little side things that we all do so um so yeah i don't see why uh, anybody else can't come on the podcast and thank you all for listening anyway if you if you do listen to it so yeah um what else let's have a look by mistake so sorry if i'm popping the same ones up twice um oh there's loads of accent ones can you do different accents i've i just keep scrolling past them i can do a few different accents but i'm not going to because it's very embarrassing um let's have a look well oh, that's a nice one what are your tips for surviving staying at home? Um, well, I think the first, obviously we're all in lockdown and it's all a bit scary and, you know, nobody knows what's going on. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just checking on the pug. He's asleep on the sofa. Um, yeah, so I, I think the first couple of weeks I sort of nailed it. I threw myself into baking. Um, then I threw myself into learning a whole, a whole load of new songs on guitar and piano. Um, and then the third week, or third, third and fourth week, sort of doing the DIY around the house. Um, and there's only a few little bits left to do um, inside the house at the moment. So, um, yeah, the last few days have, um, have been spent um, pretty much just lazing about, chilling. Um, 
I know lots of people have been trying to learn new skills. I did say I was going to learn um, a new language. Um, I can't even speak Welsh. I know I'm the most passionate Welshman in the world, it seems, and I'm ashamed to say that I can't speak my own language. But um, I did say I was going to start learning Welsh, so maybe that's the next thing. But I guess just trying to keep yourself busy, stay in contact with your friends and family through things like Zoom and FaceTime and WhatsApp video call. Um, you know, it's really important. Um, I think when we look back on uh, this time, obviously it will, be, it will be remembered for the incredible people that have sacrificed, you know, their lives and everything to to keep us safe and, and look after people and help people um, get back to health um, or to good health. But one of the other things that I think we look back on is, you know, the world, not just UK or America. And I know there's lots of things in the press and in the news about people protesting and not doing the right thing and going out or whatever. But I really think it'll be a time to look back where we can say the for, for once or for the first time in a long time the world really connected and came together and yeah so I think I think it'll be um I think it'll be remembered for that as well which is a good thing so I'm absolutely waffling now I'm absolutely waffling Kansas City baby yeah just to let everyone know I had the pleasure of um, meeting a lot of you a few of you sorry in uh in Kansas um last year um and uh yeah i got this hat i am a massive cheese head i support the packers um uh we were actually very fortunate enough to go and see the chiefs and they just happened to be playing the packers and i'd never been to an nfl game before in my life so i was just like over the moon best experience of my life and then the packers obviously beat the chiefs but then the chiefs went on to win the super bowl so you kind of got us there didn't you so yeah so i am a packers fan um, but I, I'm Welsh, I'm red, my favourite colour, so, and all the Packers hats that I've got are winter hats, so the weather's turning now, so I, this is why I've got this hat on. Um, let's have a little look here. Uh, some questions. Sorry, I just went blank there. I just I just totally forgot that I was on an Instagram live. If you could play another Outlander character, who would you be? Um That's a good question. Do you know what I would like to play? I don't know. I'd love to play Jamie Fraser because I think uh, Jamie, 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 or Jamie Davis, a Welsh, a Welsh Outlander. Maybe what, what would you call a Welsh Outlander uh, or a Welsh Highlander? I don't know, but yeah, Jamie, D Jamie Davis. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I'd like to play Graham McTavish's part. I guess that, that was a brilliant part, and Graham, Graham played it very, very well. Um, and uh, lucky again, I got to meet Graham in, even though we never worked together, different seasons. I got to meet him in Kansas last year uh, and what a bloke he was. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, and I just think I've seen, I didn't realise until um, I'd seen Outlander and I'd met him. that I'd, I've seen him in so many other things, so many different movies. Um, and, and I just think he's a phenomenal actor. Very, very, very good actor. So, so yeah, I would aspire to play that role. Um, that, that's what I would play. Mr. McKenzie there. <laughs> right then. Are the fans overwhelming? No, I mean, I mean, it's mad, it's crazy, but you know, at the end of the day, what actors and, you know, creatives and, you know, you make things for fans, I, I suppose. It's for, you know, especially TV. TV is made for viewers. Viewers are the fans. So no, I, the fans aren't overwhelming. Um, Everyone, I, every fan I've met in person has been very respectful, very nice, um, and the majority, um, obviously there's a small percentage of people that, you know, we try and ignore, um, but I'm not going to give them any sort of airtime, but no, the fans are brilliant, and, you know, every, every new character I joined, and I was in, you know, three episodes in season four, um, so I was only in, in season four very briefly, 
um, and the sort of love that I was shown just being associated with the show was was incredible and I never never expected it so the Outlander fandom is um, the best um, is the best absolutely um, but no they're not overwhelming they're all very sweet loads of Wales flags Wales 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 I'm oh, sorry uh, but no the Outlander fans are brilliant not overwhelming let's have a look God, guys, you've got loads of questions. I thought I was going to be here on my own, just me and six people. How did you get started in acting? Oh, God. How long have you got? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, really. I just... It's, there's nothing sort of dramatic about it. I just went to... I left school. I was really good in the plays in, in my high school, or over here we call it comprehensive school in Wales. Um... I always did that. I played rugby and didn't really go anywhere down that road. And then just sort of was like, oh, kind of was a little bit of a rebel towards my sort of last couple of years in, in school. And um, didn't really do that well or as well as I could have done. Um, or so I was told <laughs> um, on my uh, on my final exam. So I didn't really have any other options. So I just went to a college that sort of specialised in producing um, people that would go to great drama schools like the Royal Scottish Academy or the, the Royal Scottish Conserv Royal Conservatoire of Scotland it's called sorry that's where I trained or RADA or Bristol Vic or Guildhall so um, so yeah so that was it I, so I guess the long and short of it is I was I was always into performing from a very young age and um, didn't really take anything else seriously um, so that's the path I went down and I've been very fortunate to have met and worked with the people that I have and been involved with some of the projects that I have. So, so yeah, that's pretty much how I got involved in it. It was just something that I already did from a young age. Next question. Hello. I'll just do some shout outs now because people are typing all the time and I haven't done any shout outs for anybody. Um, I don't know. Yes, yeah, Sam did pop in. Shamai. Hello, Carly Lewis. Wales, Wales. Um, Sam did pop in. Um, I was hoping he'd pop up on the live or send a live video request, but uh, we should be so lucky, shouldn't we? But yeah, I'll, I'll sing him happy birthday later. Um, but yeah, how's it going? Hiya, Ma Martha from Texas. Who do you go to RCS with? Um, way Paul Donnelly, Wales, Wales. What's happening, Paul, brother? Paul, guys, Paul is um, in the show. He plays uh, Ronnie Sinclair. Um, you'll notice Ronnie he opened up the drinking game and he's been there. He's like one of the main men, one of the main men, the militia man. Um, but yeah, what's happening, Paul? How's it going, Paul? Missing you loads, mate. Hopefully uh, see you again one day. Nirvana 12 Angel, say hi to me, please. Hi. Hi, Nirvana. <laughs> hi from Dallas, Texas. Hello, Amy. Amy Destar. Amy Destar 3. Hello. Hello from Arkansas. Do you know what? Speaking of Texas, um, I don't know. Obviously, in, in America, you all know Gordon Ramsay is. He's like, you know, God. Um, but uh, they produ he produces a TV show in, in Britain called... Uh, Gordon, Gino and Fred and it's basically Gordon Ramsay, Gino De Campo, um, an Italian chef or TV cook and then Fred uh, Siri, Siru uh, who is um, uh, owns restaurants and is like the head of head of house or the maitre d' I guess what you would call it I don't know um, but anyway he does that show and this week's episode they were all in um, they went in they, they were in Texas and I just, they saw some of the foods and some of the barbecue and the brisket and the ribs and stuff. And um, yeah, just, I'm a foodie. So it really, really made me want to visit uh, Texas. But so yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll get there. Right then. Well, the questions have piled up again. I'm just going to see, have a look at some. Let's have a look. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Are you binge watching anything during quarantine? Um, do you know what? Do you know what? I never thought it'd be so hard answering questions because I can talk for days. Ask anyone. 
But when you get asked, when I read a question, I just totally, totally go on the spot and, and freeze. Um, I haven't, I don't think I've binged watched anything because I've tried to keep myself busy. I've played Xbox a lot, which my better half hates. Um, so I'm reliving my youth there. Kind of not, never really went away from it. But um, no, we, we haven't binge watched anything. Um, I, I just started um, Ozark with Jason Bateman there. I think um, I've watched the first four episodes the other night and I thought I thought that was brilliant so far. So I'm definitely going to continue with that. Uh, so yeah, Ozark's, um, or Ozark was, was, is, is a great one. Um, what else have I watched? I'm a rugby boy as well. So um, I know not, not a lot of you know what rugby is. If you don't, it's like American football, except with no helmet and no pads and no protection. Um, and it's continuous, continuous play. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's 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 brutal. It's equally as brutal. Um, I love NFL and I love rugby, but um, I would say rugby is maybe a tad more brutal because, like I said, we don't have helmets. Um, but, yeah, I've been watching a lot of the, the British and Irish Lions documentaries again. Um, so the British and Irish Lions are a rugby team that is made up from all the best players... Um, of uh, the UK and Ireland um, and uh, they go on tour every four years to either New Zealand, South Africa or Australia, the three Southern Hemisphere teams who have always been at the top, top level and nobody could ever beat them. Um, so yeah, that uh, they, they started making documentaries so I've been watching a lot of those again recently but um, yes, rugby is way better than football. Uh, I don't mean I, NFL, I mean football, soccer. Um, I like soccer as well, but rugby is still better. So there, yeah. Wales, I said it. Sue me. <laughs> um, let's have a little look. Do you see any other actors from Outlander when you're not filming? I mean, if we're, if we're in the same town like you know I, I know a lot of people a lot of the cast live in london a lot of them still live up in or some of them still live up in scotland um i live i moved from london um must have been about four years ago now i moved back uh, so when i left drama school in 2010 i moved to london and um yeah i lived there then for about six years or so um so i moved back to wales so now i'm in wales and i've just bought a house with my with my better half and um settling um but but yeah i mean if i'm in london um I'm, i've got plans to meet up with a few people uh when this is over that were had to be postponed now so but yeah um it's very difficult as well because you know i know a lot of, like some of the other cast members won't mind me saying this but you know people are at different levels in their career like you know, Sam and Kat, they're always very busy. Either they're doing a lot of press or other projects or they're doing lots for charity. They're always, they're always busy. So, you know, it's unless you're in the same place as they are and you happen to catch them where they've got half an hour, an hour, then you're not going to meet up with certain people. But, but yeah, it's, it's quite difficult when people live all over the, all over the world really and stay in different places. But yeah, it would be nice to, um, to catch up with people because I missed the rap party this year as well. So I was a bit gutted, um, gutted meaning sad. Um, I was in Florida in Disney World um, while we had the season five rap party and it looked like an absolute ball. So I was really upset about that. But, but hey ho, maybe, uh, maybe there'll be another one for me in the future. Right then. Let's have a little look. I'm trying to, sorry guys, I'm taking so long these questions. I'm trying to touch the screen and even though I've got huge fat sausage fingers, it won't, uh, it won't click the questions. Can you say that Welsh town that has a really long name? Um, I can say it. Um, it goes, Llan Fair Pwll Gwyngell 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 Go 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 Wales. And I think it means something like um, white rose, tr a white tree upon the hill below the stream or something like that. I know, see, I can't even speak well, so I wouldn't know. But, um, yeah, that's how it goes. In the train stations, they've actually got the signs. The signs are, like, super long as well because they've got the, 
the name written in uh, Welsh there. Let's have a look. What is it like having a friendship with the Mohawk? I mean, that's a that's a great question. That's the first question I've had for uh, my, John Quincy Myers. Um, well, I mean, the way I've looked at it is, you know, with John Quincy Myers, he's a trader, he's a hunter gatherer. So, um, in the, in those sort of positions, you're going to come across the Cherokee, uh, the Mohawk. Um, so, I think he's quite a jovial, you know, friendly, happy to do anything for anybody, help people. Uh, the right people, obviously, you know, not any sort of baddies or evil people. But um, but no, I think um, he could he learned a lot, especially when he entered in season four, um, just to be able to give uh, Jamie and Claire all that advice about how to approach uh, the natives and you know what he should what they should do to not cause a fuss and and to cause them any offence or anything. So um, yeah, but then obviously uh, in real life. Um, I did meet um, a couple of uh, the, the the actors, the Native actors who were playing the Native Americans and the Cherokee. And um, I remember one one day, uh, it was like the last day of shooting. We had to go back and do some reshoots, and it was a beautiful day in June in Scotland. And we were we had a quite a, a, a long drive from location back to Glasgow, where we were staying. And they just, I was just so interested and they just, to, they, they told me so much about their heritage and where they came from and it was just really, really interesting to listen to. So, um, I don't think they were Mohawk, but, um, I can say I've actually got some native friends and they were, they were incredible people. Um, so yeah. What else? Let's have a look at some other questions. Who's your favourite band? Ah, oh, see, now we're, now we're cooking. Um, my favourite band of all time... Do you know what? It, I'm going to say Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac, my favourite band of all time. But um, I, I do love um, The Waterboys, only because I've always known a few of their songs. But recently, since we've been in isolation and doing lots of DIY, I've been going through different albums. And like music is like my like one of my first loves. It's my passion. I love writing. I love singing. I love playing. You know, covers or whatever it is. I just love music. If I didn't have music, I would be a horrible, horrible person. Um, but um, yeah, the Water Boys. Um, I've I've just spent the last two days. Listening to Fisherman's Blues album, um, I think it was 1983 maybe or 1987, um, and it's 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 a great album and it's really folky, um, and some of the songs are just beautiful. Um, so yeah, I would say Fleetwood Mac and then a, a, a newly, newly a newly rated Water Boys for me. So yeah, that that would be my favorite favorite bands. Uh, Right then, let's have a look. What's a season you weren't a part of that you would have loved to have been in? I, straight, season three, straight away, definitely. Um, one, because I've heard all the stories about how beautiful it was when they went and filmed in South Africa. Um, and two, because the actual storylines were great, you know, having to go on ships and travel to the Caribbean and... Um, the episode, oh, I can't remember. Um, I apologise to everybody who watches Outlander and re has read the books and anybody involved with Outlander. The episode with the um, the coconut and um, the uh, the guy with the coconut and Katrina going there, um, or Claire Fraser going there, sorry. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. And um, Coco, is it Coco or Cuckoo? Um, but yeah, though that series was a brilliant series. Um, and also I just feel like, um, especially when they went into those sort of, um, that, that big house with the, um, couple of episodes later with all the, all the costumes were very good there and, um, very extravagant. So yeah, I thought, I thought I would like Father Fogden, that's him, Father Fogden. Sorry, my bad. Apologies. Um, yeah, he was absolutely brilliant. He was incredible. Um, 
so yeah, that that season three would have been the the season that I would have been that I would have liked to have been in. But anyway, I count my I count my lucky stars that I've been in seasons four and five. If you could travel, what time period would you visit? Now that's that isn't a question I can pin. I've just picked that up from everybody typing. If I could travel, well, the last five years as an actor, because of my beard, I've pretty much worked in the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s and the 1700s. So I would like to go back to maybe the, yeah, definitely. If I could go back to the 1930s, I would like to be born in the 1930s. So then that would make me what? 10 20 so i'd be like 20 years old in my 20s for the 50s because i think the 50s were incredible the golden age of of cinema and and music and rock and roll um so yeah i think i'd go back to the go back to the 30s to be born and then and then live my life from there to experience the the um the 40s 50s 60s and 70s and what and all those and the 80s, I suppose, because hopefully I wouldn't have died by then. But all those decades for music have got massive place in my heart. Um, so, yeah, I hope, that, I hope that's a good answer to your question. Um, what's your favourite place to visit in Scotland? Do you know what? Considering I lived in Glasgow for three years, um, this was way before I... I um, came to Outlander. I lived in Glasgow for three years and I and I absolutely loved Scotland. I was so nervous. I just turned 18. I'm moving from my parents and I'm I'm a mummy's boy. Um, I'm a daddy's boy. Um quite um I wasn't responsible. I was irres irresponsible and then I had to go and move, you know, five hundred and eighty miles up to the other end of the country from South Wales up to Glasgow in Scotland. Um, but I loved it. It was great. And one of the places, uh, I didn't go, um, to parts of Scotland that I would have liked to have gone, uh, while I was there, but I used to go regularly to Loch Lomond, um, and it was beautiful. We went once fishing, um, in the winter and we got absolutely eaten alive by the midges. So then we made the, um, the decision never to go back then when it was, raining and in the evening but um, we went in the summer a few times and it was great it was beautiful anyone has been to Loch Lomond um, knows as well um, and jumping in the lake as well or the loch sorry my bad um, but yeah so that was one of my favorite places to go in Scotland right guys gonna do another 10 minutes and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day then because I've got my uh, my little pug there this is bedtime little Frank pug and uh, I'll have to take him up soon. Is he starting to sleep through the night now? Wales. Right then. Let's have a look. Quite sad actually. None of my castmates have tried to join my life. That's not fair. Where are you guys? You're leaving me on my own. Wales. Uh, let's have a look. Some more questions then. Sorry, I'm, I am trying to click. There we go. Whoops. Um, let's go. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to answer this one because I see it all the time on social media. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? I am going to say yes. I love pineapple on my pizza. This is, so I'm going to give you my Kyle Reese's perfect pizza topping. This is my go-to pizza topping. Um, so it will be cheese obviously tomato base obviously cheese then we're going to get some pepperoni we're going to get some black olives we're going to get some pineapple and i think that's it i think that's all i have oh and we're going to get some onions on there as well so pepperoni black olive pineapple and onions that is my go-to pizza topping so yes Hell yes to the pineapples on the pizza. And anyone out there that doesn't like... And people people say this about us who like pineapples on pizza. If somebody likes pineapple on their pizza, then they're a psychopath. I think it's the other way around. Because I'm quite normal. But yeah, that's my go-to. I definitely eat pineapple on my pizzas. But that's, that's the only place I eat it. I never eat pineapple otherwise. So, 
Maybe I should. Maybe I should stop eating pizzas and eat some more fruit. <laughs> oh, God alive. Let's have a look. Can you sing us a song? No, I cannot sing you a song. Um, because I wouldn't want to embarrass myself. But if you go to my Instagram, I have posted one that I did earlier on. So you can have a little listen to that. I'll just scroll down. There's probably loads on there that, that will bore you to death. Uh, have you travelled Central America? I've been to Kansas. I've been to Kansas and that is it. I've never ever been anywhere else. But um, myself and my fiance, when she becomes my wife, uh, whew, scary, chills. Um, no, we, we plan on, I love America um, for, for all the, the places, the history, and I'd love to, to do a, a, a cross country trip. So I think, I, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think I might have talked her into our honeymoon being a cross country trip, um, starting uh, on one coast and then renting a big old RV and then just driving for as long as, as, long as we can take and going to see all, all of the best places, all the places that I'd love to see, which is pretty much one place in every state. So there's gonna be, I had a somebody tried to call me there I think uh, so yeah no I, I've, I've been to Las Vegas uh, love love Las Vegas um, I've been to Florida a bunch of times um, where else have I been and I've been to Kansas um, I briefly stopped off in Detroit to catch another plane <laughs> and I briefly stopped in Atlanta um, but as I was coming in I tell you what as I was coming in Atlanta looked really cool as I was landing in, they could see the city there and the cityscape. That looked really awesome. So, um, so yeah. But, yeah, I definitely will be uh, planning on coming to America again. Let's have a look. Right, I'll do a couple more questions then, guys. I've answered that one. So sorry, I'm just scrolling. There's a lot of a lot of the same questions coming in. Um all right, I'm gonna answer this one. Okay, cool. What's the character with the wardrobe that you like the most? I mean, obviously, Sam gets all the best clothes because he is Jamie Fraser. Um and also he, he fits in them. <laughs> I don't fit in the best clothes. But um, not necessarily every guy in the show. Um, I I would like, you know, to have had, you know, boots, lovely, like smart boots, a nice long coat. Um, I know my character. I love my character. I love his outfit, especially his sort of, um, there's a guy that you all say that I look like um, Grizzly Adams, is it? Um, with his hat. You know, and uh, I love my costume, but it would be nice to get done up all posh um, now and again. I'd like, wouldn't you like to see that? A, 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 you know, a dress to the T, John Quincy Myers with a little, with his little plait. Um, so yeah, I, I, maybe I would just like to get some, some posh clothes and, and, and attend a do, attend a, a function. So yeah, let's have a look. What's the best part about working on Outlander? <sighs> so many, so many. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. It's um, no, there are so many. It's it's great. Um, sorry, there's the non haircut hair <laughs> and the giant spot. Um, no, it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant show. Um, it's really fun to shoot. Um, there are difficult times. Um, you know where there's difficult situations to be in. You know we're out in the elements. In the wilderness in Scotland, a lot of the time, night shoots they can be difficult, long, long and tiring. But um, you know, when you see everybody pulling together, and for me personally as well, you know, as an actor, you you get treated the best. You arrive last. You go home first. You know, there's a lot of unsung people uh, who work in TV and film um, that that uh, that should be. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm not discrediting actors at all because I am an actor. Um, what we do is important as well. But, 
but uh, one of the, one of the things I love as well is just is just the the banter, the friendships that you make um, on on being a part of such a big family, um, and it is always. I don't think um, I've had a day on set where at one or most of the day I wasn't just laughing all the time. Um, so. You know, and I'm and I'm quite a homely person. I I don't like travelling away from home. Like I love my family. I I, I love my fiance, whatever. But I don't like travelling away. I very rarely toured as an actor. Like you get theatre shows and toured. I've I've turned a couple down because I just don't like being away from home unless it's for like a trip, which you're coming back in a week or so. But when I'm up there, I have had times at first where I was like, oh, I'm a really you know, really lonely. I really miss home or whatever. Because when you're working and you're up there as well, it's, you know, you have, you've had a, you've had sometimes a 12, 14, 16 hour day sometimes. And you, by the time you get home, you're knackered. So no, it's not like, woohoo, spring break. After you shoot, everybody's out in the bar and getting drunk and going for parties or anything. They're long, long, hard working days. You get home, you're knackered. You just want to have a quick bite to eat and go to sleep because you're up really early in the chair the next morning. So, but, um... But yeah, so I I really love love working on Atlanta. Um, it's uh, I'm just going on and on and on and on. So yeah, but right, I'll bring this forty six minutes. I'll bring I'll bring this Q and A to a close now. Just I'll do a couple more. Oh, do you know what? I'll do an hour. Go on, stuff it. We're in isolation. I've got nothing else better to do. Frank's alright there, sleeping on the new sofa. Let's have a look. Let's do some more questions. Show us the pug. Oh, do you know what? I would show you the pug, but he's sleeping at the minute. Let me just... Hold on a sec. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can see him. Hey, buddy. Say hello. <laughs> that is Frank the pug, everyone. Say hello, buddy. <laughs> oh, a tired pooch. He's a tired pooch. There we are. That is Frank the Pug. So, there we are. He's gone straight back to sleep. <laughs> um, so, that's Frank. Frank's, Frank's now famous. Yay. <laughs> uh, right then. Best thing about rugby. Oh, I'm glad somebody asked a rugby question. Um, the best thing about rugby is, I'm not well. Yeah, rugby because I've sort of grown up through rugby, played rugby. It's the relationships you build. It's not about the game. Uh, well, it is about the game in some respects, obviously. But you know, one one of the long-standing traditions in rugby is you know what goes on this field stays on the field so you know i've been in positions where i've been in the f um on the pitch playing years ago um and i've seen it and i've heard it because obviously a lot i've got a lot of close friends who play rugby um and you can have an absolute war with one person on the pitch and i mean you can take chunks out of each other you can tear each other to bits hurt each other punch kick and then you see that fella in the bar and you've got a black eye from where he headbutted you in the ruck. And he's got a swollen lip from when you went to tackle him but punched him by mistake. And you just share a pint. You share a drink together. So I think I think rugby is definitely um, a sport that brings people together. Um, and it's a family sport as well, you know. Uh, especially in, in Britain. It's um, I've been going to the rugby club since I was born basically my dad used to play my brother used to play i used to play so you sort of grow up through through rugby uh rugby clubs and you know it, it's a family sport so but yeah so that, that's one of the greatest things about rugby is how much it can bring people together and 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 sort of you know overcome any obstacles that stand in people's way i guess so yeah that's one thing i love about rugby uh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get through as many questions as I can. 
I'll do uh, I'll do two or three more and then we and then I'll say goodbye then. Um, what is my favourite thing about acting? Um, <laughs> my favourite thing about acting, I don't know. I guess all actors must be a little bit crazy because to pretend to be other people for a living is a bit weird, don't you think? Um, so now nah, I don't know. My favourite thing about acting is. Well, I guess over the last few years, you know, I, I I used to be petrified of horses, and a few years ago, I got I got a job with um, another TV station in America, and it required me to to ride a horse, and I knew I was coming up to like the final couple of meetings auditions for the part. I was getting close. And they were like, "Can you ride?" I was like, "Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep." Yeah. I was petrified of horses. Like I like to look at them, beautiful animals, but I was very very petrified of. The thought of being on a horse um so uh, i lied and i was like yes i've been riding since i was 11 years old and uh then they were like yeah okay i got the part then they sent me on a crash course on on riding horses and then obviously back in outlander now uh, riding on that um and it's great i love so one of the best things about being an actor is learning new new skills you know and and just just goes to show some of the um some of the actors at the highest points of their career you know some of the things they get to learn like by the end of their lives they must be like you know amazing amazing at so many different skills uh because they've played so many parts and had to research and practice different things for those parts so i hope one day i can turn my hand to anything because of the wonderful career I've had as an actor. <laughs> oh, I'm driving myself mad. But you're all great though, thank you very much. Thank you for coming to my Instagram live. Let's have a look. Are you a liquor or a beer drinker? Um, well, the generation I come from, it's, I drink to get drunk, it's quite sad really. It's one of those sort of, you know, whoa, we're going out, woo, spring break. We drink to get drunk. But in the sort of, in my more mature years over the last couple of years, I have sort of started drinking whiskey a lot more. Um, and as you can tell there, <laughs> last Saturday night was a big night. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I do like whiskey. Um, I've got, I've got a, a good stash coming along now. Um, but I do, you know, if I just want a couple of drinks... I will just have a couple of beers, you know, a couple of bottles, and uh, and that'll do me then. So yeah, that's what I drink: a couple of beers and a pizza with pineapple on. <laughs> Best and oh yeah, let's talk about the Bake Off. So obviously, I said when we started, I said I started baking. I thought it'd be cool to challenge people in the cast to do a Bake Off because they, I heard so much guff on. I don't even know. I've used use that word. <laughs> on set about oh i can bake and i can bake and I, and I was like you know what let's put these people let's put these actors to the test to see if they can bake and do you know what i was pleasantly surprised because every cake was incredible and i was lucky i managed to get a load of ingredients just before the lockdown came uh, from my last grocery shop so i was there but like I know people like kat and sam and tim um didn't really have anything in the house so um so what they made with their uh, with their ingredients of what they had laying around the house i thought was quite incredible if i'm honest with you so um but no the i think the best one i quite like paul paul donnelly's with his stay at home heart victoria sponge i think it was a victoria sponge um that was good and um caitlin orion's cake was very very pretty i went i wanted a bite I, I wanted to shove my face in that cake to be honest with you um, but yeah, but all the, all cakes were wonderful. If we were all on a baking show, we would have all of won. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Absolutely Marvel all the way. Uh, let's have a look. Right then. Were you sad that the Six Nations was cut short and do you think Wales would have done well? Well, we only had one game cut short. Um... Obviously, anyone who doesn't know what the Six Nations is, it's a tournament where international rugby teams from Italy, Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales and France all play each other in one tournament to see who wins the tournament, you know, as tournaments go. 
Um, and this year, obviously, because of uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, pandemic and outbreak, it cut a lot of games short. So I think England had, like, England, Ireland and Italy had, like, two, their last two games cut short. We we were all ready to go ahead with ours. It was Wales v Scotland. Um, it ha uh, Coronavirus hadn't quite breached the UK yet. Um, and obviously it was an internal uh, travelling uh, situation for Scotland to come to Cardiff. And they said the night before, on the Friday night, that uh, the game was on. It was still going ahead. Scotland team had, had come down. They were in Cardiff. Yes, it was great. I was, I was fortunate enough that... Um, I, I was going to be in a hospitality box, which is very rare in the Millennium Stadium or the Principality Stadium. I was taking my fiance, um, my best friend and his wife, and we were all very much looking forward. And then the morning of it got cancelled. Uh, we were absolutely gutted. We were, we were so upset. So in good rugby fashion, we decided to go out anyway. Obviously, this was before the lockdown. Everything was still open at this point. Um, and we went out and we had a good old drink and drank with Scottish fans who had already made the trip down and had a good old day and then I came home and had pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> so yeah, right, I will answer one more question before I go. Let's have a look. Oh, it's got to be a good one, isn't it? Let's go. Some questions I can't answer. Let's go, keep going. Uh, I'll make, I want to make it an Outlander question. That's why I'm uh, scrolling, guys. Last one. Right, there we are. I'll make this, this one. Uh, who makes me laugh the most on set? Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go with everybody. Again, is very, very funny. Everybody is so funny. Cast, crew, um, there's always such a light-hearted feeling on set. Um, especially when we're doing the big big scenes where there's a lot of, of, of main cast in the scenes. Um, but, who would I say? Tim. Tim Downey is probably one of the funniest people I've met. Um, and Katrina, yeah. I would say Tim and Kat make me laugh the most on set. Um, Kat has such a wicked sense of humour. Uh, she's brilliant and she's so witty and sharp. Uh, but she's Irish, so you know that's where she gets that from. And um, and Tim is just so so funny. Um, his voices, his comments, his jokes, um, and he's one of the most intelligent men. And Katrina is also one of the most intelligent people that I've ever met. But but Tim is also one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Um, because I'm far from vet, from in, an intellectual, um, but yeah, uh, Kat and Tim most definitely um, make me chuckle quite a lot on on set. So yeah, um, so yeah, so that's it. I've done an hour for you. I don't know how long. I don't know if that's too long. I don't know if that's too short. Um, uh, what other what the other cast members do, but. Um, I've given you a full hour there. It's twenty-one fifty-eight or four fifty-eight or one fifty-eight or you know wherever you're watching from. So thank you very much for joining me on my Instagram live on Outlander. I hope it passed the hour in isolation quickly, and I hope um, you understood everything I said <laughs> because I can get carried away. Um, so yeah. I hope you're all enjoying season five. It was absolutely amazing to be able to make it for you. And hopefully when all this is over um, and the world gets back to a little bit of normality, normality we can uh, crack on with uh, the next season. So, so yeah, it's been fun. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay at home, look after each other, be kind to each other. And uh, we'll speak to you all again soon. So yeah, Wales, Wales, Outlander, love. Bye. <laughs> Bye.